There was about 130 people there. The 97% uh, for the projector uh, was actually distorted by the fact that some of the people were actually working in IH Barcelona. I'm responsible for technical support there. And there were two projectors which were broken, which I hadn't fixed. <laughs> so when the people uh, completed the survey, took advantage of the fact to complain about the fact they didn't have a projector, that they would have used it if they had have had a projector, OK? And then over there on the right, you've got uh, what I would describe as being 21st century technology, uh, which the, the learners were, were using. And as you can see, uh, really perhaps not a lot of 21st century technology being used by the learners either in the classroom or for the classroom. So that the survey did ask them about not just what happened in the classroom, but what technology the learners might have been using outside the classroom uh, for what traditionally we would have called homework. OK? Um, the, the, the various things there, Edmodo, WhatsApp, I, I'm assuming that you're more or less familiar with, uh, what I describe them as being shared digital spaces. And uh, what I think that we probably really want to do as teachers is to take advantage of some of the opportunities that those shared digital spaces uh, provide for creating things, for creating opportunities for, for, for discussion, for communication, which is, I think, what we should really be doing in the classroom, OK? My one doubt is about Facebook. I've never used Facebook with learners. Uh, I have my doubts about its privacy, or I have a perception that its, its privacy is not as good as it could be. Um, some of you are probably very happy using Facebook. Uh, to understand the perceived lack of privacy on Facebook, you have to have a daughter. <laughs> I have a daughter. I would not want my daughter to be friends of somebody like myself if I was her English teacher. Okay, so that's my problem with, uh, with Facebook. I'm going to suggest various tips which I think you might uh, find useful. If you teach, uh, I don't know how many classes you teach, six, seven, eight, nine, ten classes, you do, not, you do not want to begin with a shared digital space for each of those classes. Pick the class, the one class, which have the best relationship with each other and the best relationship with you and experiment with them. But don't begin with, uh, with all of them. You want the space to be managed by the learners. By that, I mean if you use Blogger or if you use a Google Plus community, then what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to collect uh, the, the Gmail addresses of all of your learners. But don't, don't do that. Get some volunteer in your class to do as much of a donkey work of collecting the mails, of adding the mails, of giving them permission, get a learner to do that for you, and you save yourself a lot of, uh, a lot of hassle. And uh, all those digital spaces allow learners to post things. And I think what, you, what we really want to avoid is uh, having a blog, for example, which says, as blogs do, posted by, and it being posted by the teacher, posted by the teacher, posted by the teacher, posted by the teacher, posted by the teacher. That is very boring, right? No young person, when I say young people, I mean anybody who's younger than me, all right? So you're all young people as far as I'm concerned. Uh, no young person would ever use Facebook nowadays if only their mother could post on it. OK, that is the equivalent. You don't want that to happen with uh, the digital spaces that, that you're using, OK? So really from the, uh, that little research project uh, that, uh, that I did, uh, partly as a, almost a direct result of that, I started to write things for, uh, for One Stop English. Uh, there's a huge amount on One Stop English. I think there's over 9,000 different, uh, different articles. And in the methodology section, there are two sections on, uh, particular sections on technology. The Tech Tools for Teachers, which is the middle column there, that's actually Nick Peachy. And it's the tech tasks. Uh, Nick is tech tools for teachers. I'm really much more in favor of tech tasks for learners. OK, so what you have there are tasks that your learners could use technology for. Uh, 
hopefully to produce as much language learning as, uh, as, as possible. Okay? Just to give you a quick overview of that, that there are or there will be shortly 10 articles which I've written in that section. There are over 70 tasks there. You can see that many of them include uh, those sort of shared digital spaces that I've, uh, that I've mentioned there. The tasks perhaps some have something in common, which is, first of all, they involve very little technology, very little technology. Secondly, very uncomplicated technology. I don't believe in doing anything complicated uh, with technology, with, uh, with language learners. And uh, thirdly, as far as possible, they are designed to produce not use of technology, but use of language, okay, which I think is, is what we're really in, uh, in our classrooms for. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you uh, some examples of the kind of thing that you've, uh, you've got there. You do need to subscribe to get full access to it. Uh, you can uh, take out a 30-day free trial, which I highly, highly recommend it to you, not just for the sections which I've got there, but for the other stuff that you've got there on One Stop English. Uh, these tasks, you could do these tasks exactly as I'm showing to whether you're a subscriber or, or not. So, uh, my first one there is uh, creative writing. What I like to do is I like to take a single picture. You've got a single picture there. It's actually taken in the street outside uh, where I work in Barcelona. You've apparently got three people. Uh, the th person in the middle there is carrying some kind of green thing on their shoulders, giving them a piggyback, we would say. And I don't know how clearly you can see, but there's some kid in the pink jumper there who's just turned the corner and there's, I think you can see a kind of a look of horror on his face when apparently he sees the green thing walking down the road. Okay? That's entirely fortuitous picture, but it does appear to tell a story. So what I like to do is I like to, to show that kind of picture which tells a story to, uh, to my learners and then ask them a series of questions which are designed as much as anything uh, to prompt uh, use of language between them. So what I like to do with these is um, to get my learners to uh, answer the questions individually. Okay, so I give them time. And I, I'm not talking about using technology. I'm talking about taking a pen and a piece of paper. And on a pen and a piece of paper, they jot down notes on what they think the answers to those questions might be. Then, if I divide them into threes or fours, depending on the size of my classroom, or pairs if you've got a very small class, put them together and get them to pool their ideas on what they think the answers to those questions are and pick the best answer in each case. In some cases, we have three answers, but they finish up, in fact, coming up with a fourth better answer, which will create a better story. Do you see what I mean? Yeah? And having done that, uh, what we're then doing is, in some way, then starting to use the technology, perhaps outside the classroom. So inside class, we're just simply talking about it. We've got a piece of paper, we make notes on the story. I've helped with the language as far as we possibly can. And then possibly outside the classroom, one person in each group is then using one of those shared digital spaces, then sharing the story which they've produced uh, with everybody, not just the people in their group, but also the rest of the people in, their, um, in the class. Okay. Going to give you in each case a couple of a uh, couple of tips uh, for success. Make it collaborative. If it's collaborative, it's communicative. We want classrooms to be community classrooms. This is a great way uh, to do it. Make it digital. I've said use a pen, but at some point, when they're going to write the whole story up. Uh, it seems to young people, as I say, young persons, anybody who's younger than I am, it seems like less effort to type it than it does to write it, okay? And whatever you do, don't call it writing. I've called it writing because I'm old-fashioned. I started teaching in the 1970s when nobody had a problem with calling things by their actual name, okay? But if you call it writing nowadays, if you go into class and you say, I want you to write me a composition, you get this situation where you get a speech bubble above the teacher said, I want you to write me a composition, okay? And you get thought bubbles appearing immediately above the learner's head, which are, teacher, you just ruined my weekend, okay? You don't want that to happen. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to say, uh, you've got the notes there, before the next class, can you just pop that story onto Edmodo or whatever it is that we're doing. That means write the composition. 
Okay, but I never actually used those, those terms. All right? The other tip that I've got for you there is that, um, if, if I may say so, I think as teachers we kind of tend to obsess a little bit about correction. Okay? And we see any error that students have made as being a bit of a cockroach. Okay? So we, that wasn't a real one, by the way, okay? Uh, we stamp on, the, um, we kind of obsess, I must correct every single mistake that, that they make. I, I don't do that myself. I've weaned myself off that obsession. And what I like to do is, in the classroom time that we have, provide as much language as possible so that the mistakes don't ever get made. Okay, that's uh, a tip there for what I call creative writing, but you might want to call for your learners digital storytelling. Okay, so I think that's the, the in vogue uh, term. Instagram uh, vocabulary book is, uh, is my other one. It's my next one, rather. Um, and I, I like to do this. So much of what the language that we teach could be Instagrammed. Okay? So if we'd been doing, I don't know, uh, house vocabulary or food vocabulary, that can be Instagrammed. Okay? Um, but uh, if we've seen particular adjectives, I'm thinking happy, sad, uh, excited, bored, overexcited, whatever, yeah? Then take advantage of the fact that everybody except myself loves taking selfies. Okay, so selfie yourself looking happy, bored, sad, overexcited, whatever. Okay, so a fun little task to do, especially if you then post the pictures on Instagram, but don't say what the adjective is so that you can then get other people to guess what the selfie is supposed to be representing in what circumstances. Okay? So a slight variation on this. I live in Barcelona where people, they just go absolutely bananas about football. They're just obsessed with it. Okay? So you want a lesson, you just talk about football. Now, you don't need any other materials, you just need to talk about what happened in the previous game the, the, the night before. Why did Barca get knocked out by Atletico de Madrid, for example? Okay? So, uh, this is actually extremely difficult. I don't know if you've ever tried it, but try selfieing yourself while you're watching football. It's impossible. Okay? So we fake it at the end, we go back over what happened in the game, we get all the vocabulary, all the language that comes out of it, and then I get my learners to go away and selfie themselves as they would have been if they had been watching the game at the time. Do you see what I mean? Okay. I was going to show you some examples of my, uh, of my, of my teenagers, but I don't have their mummies and daddies' permission to show them to you. So these are the first selfies I ever took of myself. Okay? They're not nearly as good. Okay? <laughs> These are, we won't go into what I was, uh, oh my goodness. I've just emailed the wrong person the message, I love you. Okay? Uh, and there's me watching the football, or faking watching the football. You'll notice I wasn't not a very experienced selfie taker. I've still actually got my headphones in. Okay? Um, but there's so much that you can do, which is exciting to young people who are just obsessed with their own self-image. And there's so much language that we can... Uh, I think we can get out of those things, okay? You want willingness to use it. If there's a problem with people don't want to be on Instagram, you want a different tool, okay? Um, and you could use Edmodo, you could use a, a shared Google Drive folder, which would give you virtually the same thing without actually having to post things on Instagram. And on Instagram, you could also make it a private account, okay? The three Ps I've included here, but I would include them everywhere. Do you know what the three Ps are? Anybody tell me what the three Ps are? Privacy is one of them. Privacy is one of them, yes. What are the other two? Permission. Permission is the second one, very good, yes. And what's the other one? Well, you want practice, yes. First thing, you want a little bit of practice. You don't have to be an expert to use any of these tools, okay? But you just want to have an Instagram account and, and what do you do with Instagram? You want to know that basically. Practice is the first one. Permission is the next one, especially if you're teaching uh, anybody who's below the age of 18, they must have permission, parental, school permission to actually do that. And privacy is the other absolutely vital one, whether it's Instagram or anything else. And you're much more likely to get permission if you've ensured that you have got privacy. 
Okay, so they're absolutely, absolutely vital. And again, with all projects that you might want to do, don't do all of the work. Okay? So if none of your learners have Instagram accounts, they could theoretically send you the pictures which you would then upload to Instagram. Do not, do not do that. Okay? Your job is not to upload pictures or to use technology in any way. Your job is to help them there with the language. It could be, and I've got a colleague who does that, her learners don't upload, but somebody in her, their class who's a bit, if I may say so, obsessed with Instagram, all of the learners pass to the one person obsessed with Instagram, the one person obsessed with Instagram, uploads the pictures on a private account, uh, which they then look at in class afterwards. It works really, really well, and it has been successful even with young learners whose parents know that it is a private account and we're doing it, uh, we're doing it that way. Okay? My next sample task here is uh, drawing cats and dogs. Uh, for this, I would insist that my learners divide themselves into four equal groups. Okay? So if we've got 16 people in the class, there could be four groups of four in which the people in the group are either cat lovers, dog lovers, dog haters, or cat haters. Okay? That's extremely difficult. Can you put your hand up anybody who is a cat hater? A very few. I think I've got my, I have four of us. Put your hand up if you are a cat lover. That is like 97%. Okay, as it is on Instagram. So what I'm doing here when I'm designing the task is trying to ensure that the task forces people not to use technology but to talk. So they got to get together, all the cat lovers get together and they've got to talk to each other so that they can then boot out some people who are not true cat lovers. And they've got to go over there because they're not a true cat lover, they've got to be a true cat hater. Okay, and that way we ensure we get as much language as possible. All right? They draw a cat or a dog. This is not using any fancy newfangled app or drawing tool or tablet. Or anything. This is using a pen and biro. Okay? They're going to mind map it. Okay? That is not using an app or a plugin or anything else. That is mind mapping it on the drawing with a, with a pen. And then they're going to photograph it using their mobile phone. Okay? So what I'm trying to do is get the maximum amount of language, the minimum amount of technology, which is, I think is how, how it should be. Okay? The kind of digital spaces that I've mentioned, they're great places where you can, uh, where you can actually comment. Uh, and then we could have writing tasks. The writing task could be if your digital space is a WhatsApp group, you have a choice between writing a composition or WhatsApping what you think the answer to the question, what makes a better pet? Most of my learners, I don't know about yours, would actually rather use WhatsApp than write a composition. Okay, so it does provide, uh, the spaces provide those opportunities for it. Collaborative presentations are absolutely great. One of the articles uh, on One Stop English there uh, does talk precisely about that. That's for anybody who doesn't know how to draw a classroom cat. Uh, I don't know how many of you went to Andrew Wright's talk the other day. Andrew Wright has got absolutely brilliant, brilliant book, a thousand plus teach, uh, pictures for teachers to copy. Okay? Highly recommend that one to you. Uh, you do not need Google Images. You do not need technology if you have a pen, or a piece of chalk, or a piece of flint, or a stick in the sand to actually draw pictures of cats. Okay? Collaborative presentations are my, uh, are my, are my next one. <clears throat> As I say, there's, there's one of the articles there is about that. Just before I go there, uh, I think we've got a handout for you, which the article on Instagram, you've actually got the article there, so you can actually uh, look at it further. Uh, I like to put people together for, for presentations. Uh, Google Drive is absolutely brilliant because one person, not you, not you, one of the learners can create the presentation, share the presentation with everybody else, and then they can, either in class or outside the class, again, uh, they can then collaborate on the creation of that, uh, of that presentation. Okay? They collaborate on preparing it, they share it with you, you could make any corrections that you felt that you wanted to, uh, to make. Uh, they're going to rehearse it, and mobile phones are absolutely brilliant for videoing uh, rehearsal so they can look at it and then improve on the task that they've, uh, that they've got. Okay? Then they're going to come back to class, perhaps having finished the presentation at home, and actually make the presentation uh, to the class. 
I'm going to share it again uh, afterwards. If they have recorded it, again, a shared Google Drive folder is an absolutely brilliant place for them to be able to upload the presentation. Okay, so somebody's recording the presentation live in class on the phone of one of the learners. One of the learners is then uploading it to Google Drive. And from Google Drive, if we've shared that folder, we can then display the presentation, play the presentation back, and um, then we can, we can give any feedback that we want to give on that, uh, on that presentation. Okay? And again, the, the commenting that we can also do on a place like Edmodo or wherever is, uh, is also great, again, for further opportunities for, for, language, uh, for language practice. Keep it short, put it in, uh, in threes, re-rehearse, Rehearse, re-rehearse, re-rehearse, keep rehearsing, keep performing the task, keep using the language, the language, not the technology, is the, is the way that you, that you want to go. Okay? Uh, these are general tips. I think I've been over them uh, pretty much. I've mentioned most of them. That is possibly one of the keys. Do not touch the technology yourself. I literally mean that, yeah? Uh, if you must use PowerPoint in your classes, give the clicker to one of the learners. Yeah? Make the learners touch the keyboard. Make the learners actually display whatever it is that you're wanting to display. Uh, do not, I, I do not normally, I never do this. Okay? Uh, you want to create things, they want to share things, as I've suggested. You are not there as technical support. You know, you're there as linguistic support. If anything goes wrong, get one of the learners uh, to, to be technical support. And lots of learners nowadays, they're, they're pretty terrific about, uh, about doing that. I've suggested in, my, in the design of a task there, that's what I'm really trying to do is to, uh, to get them to play with language, not to play with the mouse. Okay? And there's uh, one that we're always afraid of. Yeah? Uh, the technology is not going to work for me. Uh, there's going to be somebody in my class who knows more than I. There is somebody in your class who knows more than you about technology. Wow. You want that to happen. Make friends with that geeky kid. I can say that. I was, I am still a geeky kid. You probably have somebody in your class. Do not call them a geeky kid. Yeah? But make friends with that person. You've got a friend for life. He will sort out, or she will sort out, so many of the problems that you've, uh, that you've got, okay? Now, what I'd like to do just to finish off here, um, I'd like to show you a little piece of magic, okay? I think as teachers, uh, what, we, uh, what we always try and do in, in, in our classes, we are, we are magicians. We try and take things which are intrinsically boring, language, is intrinsically boring unless you happen to be a language lover and make it just a kind of this sort of wow experience. Okay? So uh, what I'm going to do is I've got this, uh, this piece of old technology. It's just an ordinary mouse. Okay? You want to just... Yes? Okay? It's just ordinary. There's no, there's no, no tricks here. I'm going to take this mouse and I'm going to make this mouse disappear. It's going to vanish. All right? Like all good magicians, I've got an assistant. Okay, my assistant here is the lovely Julie. All right, she's going to help me. In your classes, you have 12, 24, 36, however many people you teach in your class, they are your assistants, make use of them. Okay, so watch this. This mouse is about, before your eyes, here at IA Tefl 2016, this mouse is about to disappear. Are you watching? Are you watching carefully? gone. Just like that. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, he didn't really make that mouse disappear. All he did was just drop it into the hands of the lovely Julie. Okay? But, that is the funny thing. The funny thing is, that is exactly what you have to do in your own classes. You just simply have to pass over the technology to your learners. Just hand it over to them. Okay? Now, as I can see in my audience that there are people who are not impressed by my magical powers, okay, I'm going to do a second trick. And by the way, if you got up this morning at 7 o'clock, the snow, that was me. I was just messing. <laughs> All right? Now, 
What I'm going to do now, what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to take that now vanished mouse. Now take that now vanished mouse. I'm going to transform it into something way more powerful. Okay? And I am going to teletransport it across the room. Okay? Are you ready for that? Yeah? If you watch my arm here, you will probably see, you, you'll see it as it gets teletransported. Okay? I have to really focus for this one. Okay? I can feel it. Did you see it? You have, to, you have to watch very, very carefully, otherwise you don't actually see it shoot across the room. Now, I've been trying to perfect this. I've not quite got it down absolutely pat, but over here, I think it's probably the lady in the orange jumper. Yeah? I think if you either look in your bag or in your pocket, you'll find, I think it's an iPhone 5. <laughs> it could be an iPhone 6. And I'm sorry, if it's not you, it's the person sitting next to you. Can you just show us the phone? Can you show us the phone? Can you see it? Is it there? Can you just... Yes! Hold it up! Hold it up! Wow! <laughs> Do you see that? Did you see that? Let me show you another trick. Can I get you... Can I get you... You're, I can see that you're more impressed by that one. Can I get you to hold up... Because I've spawned that phone. Okay? And I think if you look in your hands your pockets or your bags, you've probably all got now a new iPhone 5. Can you hold it up for me? Hold it up. Yes. Yes. Look how many. Oh, wow. That is just so amazing. Now, that is what you need to do in your classrooms. Okay? What you need to do is you need to go away. You need to hand over the technology. Let the magic begin. Thank you. You have the articles there on One Stop English. That's my Twitter. Uh, you're going to have, uh, have also the, the presentation and various other links there also on my blog. If you'd like to come back uh, to the Macmillan stand, if anybody does have any questions, we, we've literally got about 30 seconds left. I'm going to go back to the Macmillan stand there in, the, uh, in the, the, the exhibition area, and I'd be most happy to answer any questions that you might, uh, you might have down there. Okay, or else come and grab me now, and we can, we can do it right now. Okay, thank you very much for coming.